BTZ Optics presents Back to the Basics Live. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. A high-definition broadcast on Facebook. Focusing on camera line tutorials with our chief screaming officer, Paul Richards, and our social media manager, Tess Protesto. Back to the Basics Live. New videos every Wednesday. Welcome, everybody, to Back to the Basics from PTZ Optics. Uh, we are in a quad view right now, but I'm going to stop as soon as we get to our full view. We're talking about the IP joystick today, which is a really cool way to control PTZ Optics cameras over the network. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun show. Yeah, definitely. I will stop this playlist. It's kind of looping. We're in pre-show mode, I guess, a little bit here. As soon as it gets to our front view, and we're going to jump right into this um, really fun live show today. In fact, all right, I'll just force it. Here we go. Boom. There we go. There we are. <laughs> so Back today, to basics, yeah. um, this has been something that a lot of you have been waiting for. Firmware update for the IP joystick to enable all the buttons to work properly and uh, smooth out some of those IP um, connection issues. So I have a presentation, and we're going to jump right into it. As you might know, we've got the video right here. So it looks like Roland, uh, Michael just said, roll the video, re-roll the video, LOL. Yeah, I did kind of mess up that intro. Um, we've got a Facebook Live reaction question going on down here. It looks like people are giving the heart to the IP joystick. Well, you are in good timing because that's what we're talking about today. And of course, I'm our user group. That. Yeah, me too. I am surprised. Well, it, let's let all the votes get in mm -hmm. and show we'll it again. But we've got our Facebook user group members, our latest members. Thank you all for joining our user group. You can see the names flicking by there. And uh, We're all tongue-tied today. Oh, goodness. But let's go ahead and jump to um, our presentation. Great. So here we are. And uh, basically, there's new firmware for the IP joystick. And what this allows you to do is update the firmware music. on the joystick and the music's still on. Look at us doing everything, but we're getting it all right though. I threw everything off by accidentally saying a potty word. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're off beat here. Um, Back to The firmware normalcy. you can update on the joystick and the camera. So they both need to be updated to the latest firmware. If you need that, you just give us a call or email our support guys at support at ptzoptics.com. And you can go ahead and do that. The new functionality will include iris control, um, focus control, and improved IP connectivity. And let's just take a look at how this is usually set up. So this is the normal setup here. Um, so what you usually have, if you can see that there, is PTZ Optics cameras connected to the network via Cat5. Okay. And then you, sometimes, this is an older picture, the video is still run via HD-SDI to the computer. That's how we do it here in mm -hmm. our studio. But with some of the new tech NDI stuff, the newer stuff coming out, that may change in the future. Once we have NDI cameras here. Do yes, it. once they're shipping and the firmware's all working, <laughs> technically, NDI is such a low latency protocol that you may be able to do everything over a single Ethernet cable. Sounds good. But if you want to use the IP joystick, regardless of whether it's an NDI camera or a new camera, you are going to need to enable OnVIF on your PTZ Optics camera. And to do that, first of all, you have to locate your camera on the network using our IP address settings tool. Hopefully you already know your IP address. If not, just go to the knowledge base or check out some of our other videos on that. Once you've gone to the um, IP address of the camera, you go to the network tab and you check the OnVIF button on. And then go ahead and save it and reboot the camera, and when it reboots, it will be automatically discoverable by the joystick, which makes life so easy. So how do we find the joystick? Well, when the joystick turns on, it will automatically show its IP address, and you can see here, 192.168.111.179. Now, if, if it picked an IP address via DHCP and you want to change that IP address, you can go ahead and change the IP address to whatever you want. Um, and that's in the manual, it's all described. You can change it on the joystick or you can change it via the IP um, address through the network, through a web browser, which I will also um, be looking into in a second here as well. 
The next thing is saving your cameras to the IP joystick. And I promise to get this boring stuff out of the way and we'll start playing with the joystick in a minute here. But to save the IP addresses, what you want to do is you just want to hit the search button in the bottom left. And then you go ahead and it will show all the cameras that are on your network. If they're not showing up because of some conflicting thing on your network, you can click the handle button and automatically update them, man add them manually right here by mm. typing the IP address the OnVIF port, which is going to be 81, and then the camera address is really important. You can see here that we have address 0, 1, 2, and 3. That is the quick buttons where we can switch cameras. So those are the, the camera numbers that are assigned. Um, you can see here that we've got four cameras assigned, and each camera, once it's saved, will show up there, and we'll show that live in a minute here. Just to give you a review of the buttons on here, and I think it's pretty much time to go ahead and jump into our live um, look at this this joystick here um, is you can see here we have focus zoom and iris those are the main buttons on the joy but also we can hit IP one and that will lock us on to you can see here 192.168.111.61 our first camera in our array IP2 enter and it takes a second to connect, but it'll connect to camera two. And let me go ahead and show a live so preview that's of that. So that's just connecting the cameras to the joystick right now. So that's like switching between them. So here's camera two. I mean, look at the latency is not bad at all. Yeah. Left, right, um, and you can see, and we can call presets and do, I'll call it preset. Let's zoom into the, the on-air sign. So I'll zoom into our new on-air sign. There's two little Lego men on top. It's us. Look at that, little Lego men. That's as far as the 12X will zoom in. So what I can do is I can hit uh, preset one, enter, and then zoom out, move to a different location, maybe right here. And then what all I have to do is over here, I hit shot one, enter and it will go directly to the position that was left. So that's how you call and set presets as well. Okay. Um, so if we hit the um, search button, it will go ahead and search on VIF devices. And so it will pull up the devices automatically on your network that it has found. And then if we hit inquire, it'll go ahead and, and we, we can scroll through those. So I would go ahead and hit uh, escape and it would go ahead and connect. So the next thing that I want to show is so we talked about uh, choosing a camera and switching cameras, also setting presets, calling presets, and getting the firmware. But I also want to show the layout here. So here is the when you log into the IP address of the camera or the joystick, this is actually what comes up. And you can see here there's the search tab. That's green, right? Is that green? Yeah. Yep, that's green. And then blue in the middle, those are your saved cameras. And then red on the side here, that's the that's that. And you can actually go ahead and update these if you need to update as well. So those are all of the cameras we have saved onto this joystick. And once they've been saved onto the joystick, they show up here smoothly and easily, so we can go ahead and... How many presets can the IP controller handle? That's a good... Is that a question that is coming in? Mm -hmm. um, that's Kenny's a good question. question. It, it is on the website. There's one that I'm not actually 100% quite sure about. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm trying to think, what would that be? I could, I, we could definitely pull it up on the website. One is supposed to be like 96 or something like that. One's supposed to be a 200 something. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, go, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so I think it is, well, that's the amount of cameras. So the amount of cameras that we can do oh. is 256 with the IP joystick, but the presets, I think we're gonna pull this up for you. I think it's 100. User manual? Um, okay. It's at least 100. And maybe Maximum it's in the cameras, in the manual. Two, the reason why there's 253 cameras maximum is just because when you're 
doing networking and I, I, any given IP range is 256. Okay, it's 255. So it's 255 presets. Via, uh, that's via RS-232. Yeah, it's at least 100. I mean, it's way more than anyone would ever really need. Yes. Um, you know, if you need more than 100. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and give it a test and take a look at this. So what camera am I controlling? Now I'm controlling Kevin this camera Kevin uses here. the device and he says 255 as well. Perfect. Oh, good. Thanks for help with that, Kevin. So Kevin, have you updated your firmware would be an interesting question that I'd, I'd be interested in hearing about because um, the new firmware should allow you to increase your capabilities with the camera. Um, unless you've already, maybe you've already updated the firmware. There we go. I'll see. Michael Burgess and says, can you control all on the cameras or PTZ optics only? Uh, you can control all PTZ, uh, all on VIF cameras. Yes, it doesn't have to be our brand. It does not have to be PTZ Optics. Good to know. Now we, the best support is obviously PTZ Optics. We, the newest firmware for the uh, is really adding some new features that, like specifically iris and zoom. Like if you see here, I'm going to get rid of these two, uh, these two bar. I'll just get rid of that. Oh, Kevin just found out today that there was a firmware update and he's very excited okay, to try Okay, good. So that's Perfect. why I knew there was people out there who was interested because for example, so see, here's the zoom and there are these zoom buttons here. That always worked, but the iris, you can see we're touching the iris up there and the, let's try to color match that. That looks good. And the focus is now um, all working perfectly. And um, so all of those buttons work, shot, preset. I don't know what the setup button does. Oh, the setup button, that, that was, uh, okay, so that's interesting. I didn't know this, and I want, I'm glad we're still recording so I can, so there's a couple things in the setup. One is uh, set for DHCP, but the other is that's how you can find the IP address. Mm. Um, so you just hit the setup button, and it'll tell you the IP address of the camera, okay. and then keyboard sound. Nobody likes the keyboard no sound. No one likes the keyboard sound, but I'm just wondering. <laughs> I just want to hear what it does. I'm not even hearing it. I think it might be disabled anyway. Um, but let, the other thing I wanted to talk about is let's the go ahead. The link for the update instructions. Uh, the, the currently, it's, you, the, it's just you email support at ptzoptics.com, and they'll, they'll take care of you from there. It's kind of a custom little thing they'll send you and they have a knowledge base article and a video and everything. Email support at PTZ Optics. The other thing I wanted to mention is so here are the two main joysticks that we sell here. Um, so the RS-232 joystick um, which is a little bit less latency and then the IP joystick which is preferable um, for those of you on a larger um, let's say larger network or have more cameras out there that you want to be able to control. So one of the things I wanted to mention is if you're watching on Facebook, let's ask you, would you go for the IP joystick or the RS-232 joystick? Which one would you choose? And it looks like almost everybody's giving the heart for the IP joystick. And I hear, I see someone here asking about speed settings. Yes, Boris said speed settings, he's interested. And how to adjust oh, the speed, the speed settings, there. I guess, or... There is a speed button. Um, so let's see, which camera am I controlling here? Let's hit speed. Oh, or look at that. Focus, so yes. it looks like there actually are speed buttons. Yeah. So the speed button, you see how... You see how... Um, when you hit the speed button... Let me take this... Okay, so you can probably see that pretty well. When you hit the speed button, see it says 3... I'm gonna, actually, I'll take this. I'm gonna take this quad view, um, full screen, real quick. Okay. So the speed button's here, and when I hit that, now I'm on really fast, really fast, left mm -hmm. and right. And then when I hit the speed button again, much slower. Great. See, that's there's three levels of speed. Now our huddle cam joystick has autofocus and manual focus. Mm -hmm. Can you change that setting on the IP controller? So with the IP controller, it's interesting. So you can see here when I start touching the focus, it, auto it automatically adjusts. Okay. But when I zoom, 
it'll it'll snap back into autofocus. autofocus. So oh. that's kind of the that's preferred nice. way. Yeah. Because as soon as you change it where you are, then you you might want to change it. But if you just want to tweak it, like for example, if the autofocus is not you know you want to get the back of that thing instead of us or something, the autofocus might not get that. Well, if so you're doing you some sort of dramatic effect, even yeah, like maybe you cool want it to be slightly out of focus. Or if you're you know focusing out and then you fade to black or something. I yeah, think. you focus in. Like you want to be completely out of focus, and then you want to slowly like focus in. So that's a cool feature. Um, zoom in and out, very easy. And then the joystick is just there for, you know, grabbing that, um, you know, intuitive. All right, move over there, move over here, whenever needed. Right. So yes, we do support speed settings that are pretty good. Um, so we were get having a little conversation about the differences here. Um, We've, it's kind of almost exactly the same amount of buttons. But they do different things. They certainly. have different things. So these, this has got the hot swap. This is a Gen 2 model. This is the Gen 1 model. So as you may know, in PT Optics, we always try to improve. And every week, we, um, you know, try to, every week, every year, every day, try to make things a little better. Um, that's the way the web tool does focus, too. Yes. And it would be nice to have a manual focus um, you know, and to be able to disable, um, to be able to absolutely if, to disable manual focus. Camera options are on the left over here, mm -hmm. and here you just simply use the number keys. Yep. Um, There's some other buttons that we've never even really used to go over. Yes, but they all do have true. a function. Um, it, it they all have a function. Um, you know, it does work with all OnVIF cameras, so it was really, really kind of taken from the security market, um, mm -hmm. and now it's being repurposed for you know broadcast and streaming cameras, essentially. Kevin T says, "Can you change the speed of manual focus? Current settings seem to be pretty fast for small adjustments." For manual, what? Manual focus. Speed of focus. Speed of focus. I do not believe can be changed. Mm. So what? What one are we on now? I want See if I, can I didn't even know that was really a thing. Yeah, I didn't. Wasn't even thinking of that either. But I mean, it's pretty responsive. Like if you just tap it, you can see the steps that are there. Yeah, I guess tapping would would be. Because it seems like those steps are just. You could slow it down essentially if you tapped and then waited, tapped and then waited. I I I kind of now I'm starting to think of like how could we possibly start using some of these features in our show. You know, like, yeah. let's see, what shot is it? Is it we have shot? all these assets, we might as well. And this, this we're going to be keeping Except this here. Except sometimes people say we do overkill because we try and use all these different tools. <laughs> and there's no and need. <laughs> there's no need. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I could see us kind of like in the pre-show, just kind of... We can get a little out of control. Slowly <laughs> going into focus. Yeah. Or, or being slightly out of focus out during of focus, the pre-show, maybe. I don't know. And then zoom. I'm not exactly sure how we would use it quite yet. Can we connect the old cameras with RS-232 um, and, and RS-422 and IP at the same time? Yes, you can. Is the IP model PoE? No. This product here is not PoE. This joystick it does require power. The cameras are PoE, which has been great. Um, in fact, are you reading Facebook or YouTube? I'm actually, I can see them both here, which is kind of cool. I can see Facebook and YouTube. I'm seeing Kenny Hampton saying, is uh, the IP model PoE? And the cameras are. Um, and I see Larry Masters saying, he missed the first part. Does the new firmware upgrade to give the IP controller all of the features of RS-232? Pretty much, yes, except for um, the ability to turn on and off manual uh, exposure and auto exposure. Because as soon as you touch the focus or autofocus, it goes in, turns off auto and goes back into it. But as soon as you use the joystick, it goes back into auto. So it does a lot of that behind the scenes, whereas you have a little bit, teeny bit more control with the RS-232. And a lot of people say that it's a little bit more instantaneous. But, um, I mean, just take a look at how quickly it responds. So let me turn the speed down. So 
you can see there might actually be a teeny bit of latency over the network, but it's really usable for a studio. It's extremely usable for a studio. Um, maybe a little less usable for live sports. And I do have a trick for those of you in live sports. There is a trick. Um, you can actually, because this is using OnVIF, the joystick's using OnVIF, you can actually use um, OnVIF monitor. There's a, web, there's a Windows app and a Mac app for OnVIF uh, device manager where you can actually take a look at the devices and that's kind of fun and you can actually do it that way. So that's another way to, um, to match up the latency. If you're super worried about the latency, just pull up OnVIF device manager. It will have the exact same latency as the joystick and it'll kind of make your life a little easier for those like fast moving sports projects. All right. So, do you want to head into the pre-show and do a little yes. Q and A? We'll do a Q and A in the pre-show. Any follow questions? Thank you guys so much for watching today. Don't forget to go ahead and join the Facebook user group if you have not already. It's facebook.com/groups/ptzopticspals. We'd love to have you come join the conversation. All right. I am going to run the outro. <laughs> Fade to black on that one. Um, thank yeah. you, for everybody, for being here. I think the outro got a little clipped. I don't know what happened there. But um, it's been a fun show. Um, this has definitely been a knowledgeable um, experience, I think, for um, anyone out there with the IP Joy, I think, is going to appreciate this. Uh, another question here coming in from Kevin. He's saying, Gigabit Ethernet is a must for the IP joystick or latency will be terrible. Thank you for that. We actually, and Michael Seth Burgess is asking if we're going 10, 100 or gigabits. We're actually on a five gigabit switch. So we actually have a five gigabit ubiquity POE 24 port switch. Is there a home button? Um, and uh, yeah, so that's good. Did you, the, the Facebook live stream's over? Yes. Okay, so we just, we just answer questions on Facebook, on YouTube. Is that what you wanted? It's fine. No, it doesn't matter either way. I just feel bad for the guys who might have been on Facebook still. Yeah, that's true. But um, not a big deal. I think there's much more people on YouTube. Well, I um, thought because we couldn't clip or separate, you just like to do. Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, I think just about the beginning, mainly, I think. Okay. But it's fine. Sorry, those on Facebook. <laughs> that's not a problem. Um, yeah, we've got this new little uh, lower third thing showing our group members and our chat. So I'm really happy about how, how that all How do you go looks. back home? The home position? Yeah. I know. It might be I'm shot scared. zero. Usually if you set, like what, if you're trying to set a home position, what do you yeah. mean home? Like reset. Kenny said, is there a home button where the camera will return to known fixed shot? That would, usually what I do is, what most people do is they reserve preset zero for the home spot. Okay. So um, if you go to, um, you know, to preset, if we set that as preset zero, that's our home spot for this camera. We move over here and then, let's see, I'll get rid of this. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this shot so you can see a little better. And then we just go to shot, zero, enter, boom, it'll go back to that home position. Uh, we are working on a few new things. I know some of our um, customers in the, in the Facebook user group was asking about, um, presets that could also be attached to other camera settings. For example, um, saturation or exposure or iris control or sharpness. And what we're trying to do in the latest firmware upgrade is to have the ability to, bet between presets, set all of those um, parameters of the camera. And that hopefully will be in a new firmware update. That's a really big feature. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Like, dip, like if, if you're on this preset, use this iris and shutter speed. That camera looks dark. But I guess that's probably because of the... Um, There's something going on with my computer anyways. It looks looks fine here. So it's skewed there. But know. that makes sense, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you change to this preset, now change the iris. Now change Because it might be a different lighting, lighting scenario. Exactly. So I appreciate it, everybody. It looks like it's just the Facebook chat here. Is there a huge difference between... 
there's I see a huge difference between three different switches I've tested recently. Daniel Wright came over here after the show. <laughs> Oopsies. That's what happens when Tessa's in charge of Facebook Live. Yeah, right. <laughs> I did kidding. the same thing for Huddle Cam and you didn't say anything. It's maybe fine. you didn't notice. Oh, I didn't. Oh, uh, maybe I did notice. Whoops. It's fine. It's completely fine. It's a nice yeah, little short show. Yeah, he's gonna beat me after this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was not a funny joke. That's not even funny, Tess. That's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so why don't we just, um, I think that's all of our questions. I think we did a great job with the double joysticks here. Um, we went through the whole presentation. I think this is going to be a very, um, helpful tutorial when we upload this to YouTube. This has been a scandalous show for me. I know. It's like you said shart in the beginning. Why did you say that? Everybody <laughs> forgot. Uh, I said start and I accidentally said shart. Oh my gosh. And then... <laughs> You have to be careful with that, Tess. I know. See, We're good thing we ended. Good thing Facebook. we ended the Facebook stream. It's almost so, uh, like double, double bad because you're on Facebook and YouTube. No, it's good thing we cut the stream at least, so only half of the viewers are seeing oh, okay. my flukes today. <laughs> I don't um, know. I'm feeling like crazy or something. But yeah, we also have our um, on-air sign. I mentioned that already, but. Yeah, it's pretty but cool. We love it. And there's one outside as well. So we can like turn it off and on. And actually use it functionally and let our coworkers know that we are streaming. Yes. That one's this one's more for fun and looks. It is. It is more cool it really is for looks. In fact we can turn it off we'll turn it off as soon as we go off. Is there a web interface to the controller? I am controlling remotely. Yes. We just um, talked about oh, This no. is the IP joy, but um, I could actually probably pull that up. I might as well, I guess. Let's see here. Pull this up. And. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So what we're going to do here. Yeah, that was a little kind of interesting. Let me pull this uh, web browser up. So every camera has an IP address that you can get to from a web browser. So I'll just go ahead and show you that, 192.168.111. It'll ask for your password, which will be admin admin. And you can go ahead and control, let's see if this is the right camera. It's a different camera than the one you're seeing right there. But you can pan, tilt, and zoom, set presets, call presets, and you can actually open up the on-screen display menu remotely, which I have to actually talk to William Warfield about, because that'll probably be streaming a baseball game, and I think that's what he needs. Um, so that is how that works. So yes, every camera has an IP address, uh, which is nice because you can just simply pull it up, change some settings remotely, don't have to be anywhere near it. Daniel, the on-air sign is not controlled through vMix. It's simply just LED lights with a switch. Yeah, that would be sweet. We, if we did that, do you know how much geek people would geek out about how cool that would I be? I know, that would be really Like cool. as soon as the blah, 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 blah. Even if it was controlled by the lights somehow. Yeah. Something. Sweet. Yeah, people, want, people want us to automate this on-air sign hardcore. I know. We could throw a Philips Hue in there and do it from our Honestly, cell that, phone. We could do that. Then we could make it red. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm liking your idea. Example. If Tess is home, can she access the cameras in the studio? Good point. Um, so if Tess were to want to control the cameras from home, she would have two main options. One is she could use LogMeIn software, which is a lot of times, like if the broadcast PC is running, mm -hmm. you can log into that computer. Oh, right, right, with Jonathan From LogMeIn, from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's like a private connection. I could just, connection. like, hack my way in because I'm really yeah. skilled. Tess would just use a command area. prompt in Linux and just, boom, and just hack her way in. That's the third. That's the third way, which I don't suggest doing. Cause okay. could, there's some firewall options that could probably set some alarms off. I'll keep that in mind. Um, so don't encourage Tess to start learning how to hack into the servers, because I don't think like I could. That's a good idea. <laughs> but the other way would be uh, there's actually I guess three ways. The other way is technically you can do what's called port forwarding on your router, and what that allows you to do is take an internal IP address and whoop forward it over your firewall outside your router to an outside IP address. You do need to get outside IP addresses from your internet service provider, your ISP, Verizon, or Comcast, and then you can connect to the cameras from anywhere in the world and take a look at them, do whatever you want to them. Maybe one day you'll be able to do it 
with some sort of IP protocol? Well, if you, it a actually technically you can, and I learned this um, a little bit ago, is that the, I the iPad app that we have can connect to outside IP addresses. There so you go, Boom. We have one camera in our facility that's outside and it has an outside, it's actually outside our building mm -hmm. and it has an outside IP address. So I don't know why actually we do that, just so people can log in and we can, they can check it out from anywhere in the world. And you can go ahead. Because it acts more of a security camera. So. Kind of, yeah, it's more just like an outdoor camera because people put them in baseball fields and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's out there and um, technically, you can control it via the iPad by just by typing the iPad the addre address and usually inside IP addresses start with 192 and outside IP addresses start with 173 from my experience. Um, Richard Sparks, because my computers are also on the PoE switch, my cameras are on all the time. Also, the IP joystick is on all the time. Any potential problems with leaving everything on 24/7? The system is used about three hours a week. A power switch on the IP joystick would be nice. Mmm. I'm Kevin really glad. Here. He says he does it all the time. He remotes into them when I can't be on there to live stream. Yeah, that's awesome. And that that's part of the cool thing about being able to have a robotic camera is to just log in remotely, operate it for your church on mm -hmm. Sunday while you're at home or whatever, whatever you're doing. Um, yeah, I operate these cameras remotely too sometimes. It's really great. Um, but Richard, you're right. When I'm done this stream, I'm going to go ahead and talk to my lead engineer because I know that there's going to be another iteration of the IP joystick with some improvements. We're always improving our products and that's a good one. So thank you for that idea, Richard. I'm going to bring that one to Joe, our director of operations and say, hey man, can we add a switch to this? Um, neither of our joysticks have a switch and I, they, they could come back to me and say, hey, it's such a low voltage thing. I mean, it, think about it. The joystick, really all it's doing you know, it's not even like a like a motor or anything. Like I'd be more worried about the cameras, which do have a switch on them, um, than something like this. That's a joystick. It's not even like a computer or a processor. It's just a. Our lead engineer Matt Davis says should pose no issues. Okay, great. Yeah, so it should. Yeah, I, th I think that them not putting a switch. I think it's there's a reason why. And I mean, you can see on the back of this device, if I cut over here, you can see it's got like a little LAN link. Now PoE would be nice. Not going to lie. The RS-232 here is inactive. It doesn't do anything. Um, PoE would be quite nice, but because uh, then everything would be PoE, but uh, yeah, it's nice. By the way, good thing you're not balding with this uh I know, it's right up in <laughs> my face. It is a wide angle, I will <laughs> say. And uh, that was the, the idea, because I think from time to time, I could see myself using that. Honestly, like if it was set up properly, let's see when if we can get back to that shot. It's like my favorite shot now. Um, so this you shot here. You love anything behind the scenes. Like if I was to, it still needs to be angled a little differently. It but looks like I'm nowhere near in frame, but if you look at the frame, I'm clearly there. I know. How could, it's crazy. And if I was doing a little tutorial on like vMix or something, you could see I was using it here and I could be like, see this, see that. And you could kind of be like right there up in the in the show, but so yeah. it's just, it's, I don't know. Uh, that would be good if you want to pretend like you're talking to the person really quick, to the yeah. viewer. You could turn and be like, see what I mean? <laughs> see what I mean? Don't I you like feel that. that way? Can you believe Paul is so crazy? Actually, that's what we should do. It's all about knowing, wh and we're gonna actually have a, ta what's a tally light system so we know which camera is on, because this playlist thing, now of course, it's one thing I'll mention is that most people that do live streaming on- DVE stores that test his last day on the job. I'm having a rough oh. day today, huh? <laughs> yeah, Tess is done after this. Uh, too many curse words. But yeah, thanks for joining the show, everybody. And uh, come on in to uh, see more. And this is the VL cam. By the way, you can see it right here. Four ninety nine, I think. Great picture on this thing. I mean, it is a, a super crisp picture. And uh, I mean, just look at the crispness of this picture. And there's a little... I'm going to go back to it one more time. Turn this off one more time because I just geek out about this one. So check this out. So it's got on it a manual zoom. So I can zoom in and out <laughs> and whatnot. And then, so if I do zoom in on something, then I have to adjust the focus. So it's got a 4x optical zoom on it, but it just, it's so crisp. And so if I go back, I think that's where we liked it. 
Oh, that right there. Yeah, gorgeous. Right there, that's the shot. <laughs> but yeah, manual is kind of interesting. I don't. Is that? Yeah, I that, don't know because no, it's not. I don't know. It's not full screen, so it's really hard to tell when you're looking at a little square on VMix. Well, how do you figure that's gonna? There. Eh? There, that's good. <laughs> So if I ever do start going gray or bald, How does you will it, know. that camera connect? That's just connected via HD-SDI. It does have an IP port on it. It is 100% PoE right go. now. Um, so I can take one of our other cameras. Here's a 20X across the way, looking at it. And um, it is just plugged into HD-SDI and PoE. I do have a little piece of Velcro, just to kind of stick it there. Great, and Matt Davis is watching. Now I'm really fired. Yep, now you're really fired. So Matt's jumping in and saying RTSP, RTMP, and maybe NDI one of these days, right, Matt? <laughs> right, Matt? <laughs> can we do it? I think you can. We're not even live on that camera. We're just goofed. Yeah, I know. We're, we're not even. We need here. the tally lights. And we the, need. They're the actually. Lights. I should be checking the mail because they're like should be here. Okay. And then that would be really great because if we had every camera positioned properly. Now, if the tally lights were on the camera, I think it would work. The new New Tech NDI camera does have tally lights on the camera. Their camera has a little light that lights up and says when it's on. Mm. Ours, ours will not have that. Uh, but if it was just a teeny light like that, do you think that would be enough to let you know? I don't know. Yes. If it was if it was red and it was mo I think I might be able to follow that. I don't know. So. I think I might too. Do you have any cams that are power zoom but not full pan tilt? Need a cam that is for a static shot, but need it to zoom in and out. And Matt is answering this question. Would like for it to be PoE and remote control. I do not believe that camera is PoE is the problem. Twenty XZ cam sounds like what you're looking for. But we are going to be. Um, getting a 20x z cam in the studio for that exact reason i was just talking to matt about this oh gosh i feel like since I'm i can see you because i know i have the back that's what this is why i put the behind the scenes cam <laughs> so i keep an eye on you when i'm over here but i figure no. since i'm already on a roll today i might as well yeah. just this is like i if i'm not we can't now we can't boost this on facebook there's too many mistakes no that's why we cut the stream early <laughs> oh, good point. on facebook so we're good to go brother <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we can boost it to some other, some other audience, not our PTZ Optics fans. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut the post show off, and then it can just be our PTZ Optics fans can enjoy me messing around with you. That's a good point. So currently, Matt is saying it does not have PoE, which is the only issue based on your request. Will it still work with? Y it should work with the Wi-Fi Texas adapters. Yes. Which let me pull one of those out, since you mentioned it, Kevin. What a, this is the, the Wi-Fi Texas adapter. So it takes PoE in and it goes ahead and converts it to power. There you go. So these are like 15 bucks. And I, you, I use them quite a bit actually. They're not, they're not too shabby. You can see the part number there. Look at that camera, just so crisp. When you get too close to it, it does go a little out of focus, but I mean, these cameras are super sharp and the 20X model, I don't, Matt, I'd love for you to answer this one since you're here. Can you remotely control the, the, the zoom over the network? I've never tested that. But our, our, our goal is to put the, P, the, the camera there so that we don't need this here. Because this is a little annoying. It's mm -hmm. like in the middle of everything. The way we're using this, by well, the way, is... We should have that down here, at least. It so probably should have been like down it there. It should have been down there. I mean, it's too late now. But the way that this is working, it is looking really nice and smooth. Um, <laughs> Basically, this is connected to Tess's computer, and Tess's computer's on the network, and the network has NDI on it, and we've got two instances of vMix running. So Tess's laptop is pumping all cameras in her vMix are available on the network. So I'm pulling in this, because I didn't want to run USB all the way back to our main PC. Right. All the way over there is our main PC, that giant rack with all those cables. So I didn't want to do that. So we decided to just bring in actually into Tess's laptop here, the USB three, and then she's plugged into the network. I'm plugged into the network. Yeah, this behind the scenes cam is gonna definitely, and if we had one up there, done. This studio would be <laughs> almost done. Um, I'll show a couple other things. So we've got our on air sign. We also have some new lights. 
So you can see there's one here. There's a red light here. Um, Tess put a blue light up there. And that was not on. I know. I had to unplug it from my computer charger. Oh, Mid-show. Okay. Mid-show. Oh, again. Wow, something... Ha See, we, so we need more power. Is it, so, we, yeah, we are in, like, shambles of change right now. I will say that. It was a lot of change going on in this studio. Uh, this one of the, this on-air sign, we have one of them out in the front, too, so no one's bothering us, which is nice. Do you think a Dell Inspiron N5030 laptop could run Sonic Mania smooth? I don't know. Sonic Mania? I don't know what that is, so... J1TM wants to know that, and neither of us are sure what that is, I'm assuming. Maybe somebody else in the chat can help you with that. Yeah, what is that? We I don't, don't know. know. Don't Google it. Don't There's Google always it. danger in that. Look at that. Seven hearts for the IP joystick. Nothing All for right. the... All right. Wow. Well, there and you see, go. Maybe it's just because I'm used to using the huddle cam joystick, but... Yeah. I know. I have love for the, the huddle RS cam joystick, but like I was saying, and Tess and I, I don't know if you saw our last show on Stream Geeks about streaming concerts, and it was, I think I almost wanted to go back to the basics on concert streaming one of these days, mm -hmm. but we did yeah, everything we serial based, and I think next year it's all definitely going to be RS-230, or IP based. Now, I've always been scared of IP networking and setting IP addresses, especially when it's not like your local network. It's like, Let's bring a network somewhere and hope it all works. It kind of scares me still to this day. Uh, but I think 2018, it, I guess it's, it's going to take m probably more time to set up. Because we have the Ethernet cables and network set up. More, yeah. I, more IT, less plug Next and play. Next year might be a little different. If we're which is why route. people are probably still going to want to use HDSDI and RS-232 because they know it works. It's serial. It's plug and play. It's not this networking world of networks that, you know, is all perfect in in reality or in it's all supposed to be perfect but is it really perfect is the question and uh i haven't personally ever gone out and live streamed an entire show all based on ip video that's what kind of scares me but that's what everyone says the future is so it's like a scary future i think that covers all of our questions Great. for today good yeah sorry we couldn't fin uh, get that question to you j1 um jtm about the sonic mania we have no idea what that is yeah thank you guys again so much for watching if you want to join in the craziness that is us <laughs> and ptz optics go ahead over to facebook.com slash groups slash ptz optics pals and join our user group thanks for joining everybody um, this time the outro is actually going to work <laughs> here we go <laughs> Thank you.